Spiritual Teaching 261 Love Each Other 1. My word is clear, its simple expression persuades and moves the wise as well as the rude. Before its clarity, you have easily understood many lessons that you either could not understand or did not want to accept. 2. Now you know that man can recognize his God without having to resort to the exaltation of the senses to perceive through them the spiritual. Today you know that despite your limited brain, you can give yourself an idea of how the perfect communion between God and man will be realized, just as you are also convinced of the truth of my manifestation through the understanding of my spokespersons. 3. The light has been made in those who have listened to me, therefore, the false and the impure will not enter their heart. 4. It is the time of light in which man, in addition to believing, will understand, reason and feel my truth. 5. The purpose of my doctrine will make everyone accept that no one came to this world without just cause, that cause is divine love and that the destiny of all beings is to fulfill a mission of love. 6. In all times, from the beginning, men have asked themselves, What am I? To whom do I owe my life? Why do I exist? What have I come for and where am I going? Much of your doubts and lack of knowledge have found the answers in my explanations and through your reflections on what I have revealed to you over time, but there are those who already believe they know everything and I tell you that they are in serious error, because what is kept in the arcanum of God, it is not possible for men to discover it until it is revealed to them, and it is much that exists in that arcanum that you still do not know, its content is infinite. 7. This world will take another step in the knowledge of the truth, Soon you will suffer confusion, but then you will calm down and come to the understanding. 8. Man has always struggled to achieve the knowledge of the truth. In the beginning he attributed everything to nature, but later, observing and meditating, he came to think that it was not possible that in life so many wonders and perfect works, that there had to be a creative force and intelligence and a higher power. In this belief, the faith of men was affirmed who in turn created cults and rites to worship him from whom all creatures had sprouted. 9. New questions arose from the human heart. Who is God? How is it? Will it really exist or no? These and other questions men asked about my existence and my essence, but I have always answered every call and every question. 10. Many tests and revelations God had made to men since the first days of mankind, tangible and visible materialized manifestations, according to the naivety, ignorance and innocence of those creatures, until, when the opportune time arrived, I showed myself to the world through Jesus, to answer personally to all the questions of men, to dispel all uncertainties and prepare them for a time in which they would stop being ignorant, innocent and foolish children, to become, thanks to the light of, the Divine Spirit, great disciples, in children raised by love and knowledge, in beings aware of their nature, their destiny and the reason for their existence. 11. Thus, while some have always sought divine support and help to succeed in life, others, as who were evolving in intelligence, were growing in pride, believing themselves absolute, powerful and wise. They considered themselves capable of conceiving creative ideas and being self-sufficient. 12. Spiritualists and materialists have always existed in this humanity as well as the struggle of ideas between one and the other, each striving to demonstrate who has the truth. 13. My spiritual presence at this time came to pacify you, to make you reconcile, to answer all your questions and to prove to you that neither those who have fought for the spiritual, nor those who proclaim that the only truth is the one you have in material life, you are right. The former have sinned as fanatics and the seconds of fools, have not realized that both carry a part of that truth, but that they have not known to harmonize, reconcile, or unite them with love. 14. It seems impossible to you that both of you come to understand each other, you do not believe in a unification of such magnitude, but truly I tell you, I do know that this union will be realized. 15. You would cease to be constituted in the perfect way in which God created you and you would cease to have my light in the consciousness so as not to act in a just and upright manner as are all the works of the Father. But it's necessary to wait a while yet for that light, that divine part that you call consciousness, to travel through man all the path of free will grant it to him, so that she is the one who initiates him in the work of regeneration, 
restoration and spiritual elevation. 16. You have arranged your heart like a sanctuary to receive me there. You passed an exam first from your consciousness and from many eyes tears of repentance rolled down. 17. I have listened to all of you and I bless you all. 18. I know who felt sorry for having been weak in the test, who had promised to forgive his enemy and did not do it, and when he returned to me to listen to me, he instantly felt the claim of his conscience and confessed humbly his fault, asking me for a new opportunity. 19. Know that I come to strengthen you so that you will not fall again, that I come to teach you with patience and mercy infinite numbers and that I will give everyone new opportunities to demonstrate their understanding, their effort, their will and their advancement. 20. See how a sincere repentance washes away some stains, lightens your burden and gives peace to your heart. When you feel free of your burden, think that there are many of your brothers who do not pray and they do suffer, so that you pray for all of them, with the full faith that my bomb will be poured out on all suffering and needy. 21. I do not ask you for prayer that lasts long hours, but for short and heartfelt, simple in form and profound in spirituality. Those instants will be enough for me to grant you my charity. 22. Prayer is the spiritual means that I have inspired man to communicate with my divinity. Therefore, it manifested itself from the beginning in you as a longing, as a need of the spirit, as a refuge in the hours of testing. 23. He who does not know true prayer does not know the delights it contains, does not know the source of health and of goods found in it. Feel the impulse to approach me, to speak to me and present your request. But, lacking spirituality, the offering of elevating only thought seems so poor that it seeks the moment something material to offer me, believing that it flatters me better. 24. In this way humanity has been falling into idolatry, into fanaticism, into external rites and cults, drowning her spirit and depriving her of that blessed freedom to pray directly to her father. Only when the pain is very intense, when the pain reaches the limits of human forces, it is when the spirit, forgetting forms and knocking down idols, he frees himself and rises to cry from the depths, My Father, my God! 25. Through prayer peace is achieved, wisdom is acquired, health is obtained, the profound is understood, the mind is enlightened, and the spirit is strengthened. 26. He who knows how to pray from spirit to spirit feels accompanied everywhere. Not so with he who seeks forms and images, you need to go where they are to feel their presence and feel safe. 27. Do you see in this time of materialism the peoples engaged in making war on each other? Well, I tell you that there, in the midst of those wars, many men have found the secret of prayer, that which is born of the heart to reach me as an imperious call, as a complaint, as an imploration. And when they have seen the miracle they requested arise in their wake, they have known that there is no other way to speak to God other than with the language of the Spirit. 28. Disciples, you who form a people who have received, not a lesson, but a book, will remain prepared to speak of the Master as no one has ever spoken. 29. I am going to give you many opportunities to fulfill your missions. Take advantage of them. Give to all to all teach. What I have given you has no limit and therefore your heart will never be empty. On the contrary, how much the more of you, the more you will see it multiplied in you, the more you love, the greater you will be in virtue. 30. I leave my love among my people as a testimony of my presence. 31. My communication is with you. My light radiates on the human understanding to send my message of love to humanity. 32. You will be the emissaries on whose lips my word goes from region to region and from heart to heart. 33. These moments are of meditation for this people, they serve you for your internal examination, so that you know truly if you love me with purity or if you have fallen into fanaticism. The time is ripe to repair errors. 34. Studying the meaning of the word spirituality, you have understood that it is a mistake to want to represent what divine through forms that you call symbols, an error that increases when you consider that you are hiding with appearances the reality that you have in front of you. 35. See that I always manifest myself in intelligence, in life, in love, in power, never in inert bodies. 
Today you are attending one of my manifestations, which is through the understanding of man. Why do you insist on representing me with inanimate forms and bodies? This man I'm standing for communicating. He is feeling me deeply and intensely in his spirit and even in his matter. His joy is deep and his ecstasy makes him contemplate clearly the light that reaches his understanding. 36. You are similar to this man, so why don't you feel me equally in your heart? 37. Meditate on this teaching and you will come to the conclusion that there may be spirituality where the tendency to materialize what is divine. 38. Not all of you will understand by now what spirituality means, nor will you understand why I ask you that you reach that elevation. Could you be meek and obedient to my commands, when you don't even know what am I asking you? But there are those who understand the ideal that the Master is inspiring to his disciples, and they will be quick to obey your directions. 39. The love of symbolism and forms, as well as the cult of images, is reminiscent of the spiritual childhood of humanity, of primitive times when men needed the external and the apparent to believe in the divine. 40. Human intelligence was at the beginning of its evolution, so I would not have told you, analyze and understand what belongs to the spirit. But now that man has penetrated all the ways of science, which has developed many philosophies, which has mentally evolved in many other orders, when will you come to? Understand spiritualism? Will you be confused by my new message? No, people, the spirit of humanity needs and longs for my saving doctrine. 41. Do not fear the struggle to spread and sow this teaching, and many peoples respect the sacred right thinking freely, later men will know the freedom of the spirit that until now has not known humanity. 42. Wars will continue in the world, the threat of death and extermination looms over the peoples. It is that men determined to preserve their philosophies and doctrines do not want to contemplate the truth. 43. I give you spiritual strength, people, so that you do not fear failure. When I have told you that this light that I have made in your spirit shine, it will dispel the shadows. I repeat that I have told you the truth. 44. At this moment I envelop you in the light of my divinity. I descend to prepare you as teachers so teach with words and with works of love and charity, of humility and forgiveness to your brothers. More I tell you in truth, that works always speak louder than words. 45. Man also speaks of love for humanity, of brotherhood and peace, but with his works he denies his words. 46. Now that I have descended to communicate with you through human understanding, I tell you, not to be one of those who, speaking of love, harbor hatred, who, speaking of good, practice the opposite and speaking of peace. Provoke wars. No, in order for you to see my word flourish among you, you must speak of it through works that are born from your heart. 47. Speak by the Spirit because you are in the fullness of the time of the Holy Spirit. Keep it always high that if for a moment you feel far away, it will not be I who has moved away, but you who have weakened in your spirit because I always live in your heart. 48. The distances and barriers between the divine spirit and the heart of the man, man himself creates them. But I live so close to you that you will not have to scrutinize the horizon with your eyes to contemplate me. It will be enough that you penetrate with anointing and recollection within you so that you may find me in my sanctuary. 49. My revelations of this time comes to put you in spiritual contact with my divinity, intimacy that your spirit has always sought. 50. I still contemplate and hear this humanity flatter me and call me with their rites, chants, verbal prayers and various forms of worship to feel close. I make everyone feel my presence, I am with everyone, but the time has come when as a father I want the worship of my children to be perfect, that their communication with my spirit be perfect. And it is what this teaching has come to reveal to you at this time. Today you have learned from the Master how you should pray and how communication is achieved from spirit to spirit. 51. For you to take steps forward on this path, I encouraged you to put aside the ritual and all exterior worship. Then all those objects with which you were trying to represent divine attributes to me, and also the materiality or exteriorization of your spiritual worship. 52. 
My doctrine is not only to give you strength and tranquility during your passage on earth, it will teach how to leave this world, to cross the thresholds of the hereafter, and to enter the eternal mansion. 53. All religions comfort the spirit in its transit through this world, but how little they reveal and reveal how to prepare for the great journey to the hereafter. That is why many see death as a limit, without knowing that from there the infinite horizon of true life is contemplated. 54. You have called spiritualism the teachings that I have brought you as the Holy Spirit at this time, because he has revealed many impenetrable mysteries to you. It is no longer time for a veil to exist between the hereafter and man. I will reveal to you of that life as far as you can understand and only what my will is. 55. Do not look at the grave as the end. Do not look at the emptiness, death, darkness or nothingness. Because beyond material death is life, light, the whole. 56. Before entering those regions you will have to prepare yourself, and by raising your spirit you will be able to from now that you are incarnated, inhabit or penetrate the spiritual valley. 57. Do not see in your body a chain, an enemy or an executioner, see in your matter a weak creature who you must strengthen, because then she will be your servant, your staff and your best instrument to complete a mission and climb up the mountain. Spiritualize it without letting it fall into fanaticism, so that you can let go in your prayer and carry the bomb to the sick on the wings of thought. 58. When in the second era I spoke of my kingdom to my disciples, they did not understand me and they asked, Where is your kingdom, Lord? But when the day of my departure approached, my word ceased to be in a figurative sense, it became clear and everyone understood. 59. Also at this time, as the moment when I stop communicating in this way is approaching, I have left the figurative sense to tell you clearly and simply about the great lessons I had in store for you. Everything I spoke to you since 1866, it will be summarized in my teachings of the last three years. 60. This word, which through the divine ray illuminates the understanding of man and which you have heard at this time, it has been for you the new manna for your spirit. It has also been similar to the miracle of the loaves and fishes that Jesus worked in the desert. 61. The time in which I will speak to you is very short. Prepare yourselves and take advantage of my word and my examples, so that with it you raise up among humanity to testify of my teaching. Many doors will open for you, others will remain closed. Multitudes of men will come to listen to you, and among them will be the deaf. You will sow, because the heart of humanity is like the earth. I will send you the dew and the rain on your sowing, and the seed will germinate. 62. Those destined to go after other peoples will cross borders as envoys of peace. 63. The world, like a valley of atonement awaits you with all its pains, its vices, its diseases and its wounds, so that in him you deposit the bomb that cures all ills, which I have entrusted to you. 64. You do not feel capable of great actions, but I, by an atom of your love or your charity, will do for your conduit surprising works of which you will come to feel unworthy. 65. When my word no longer vibrates in these venues, you will meet to read my lessons, of which you will understand many teachings that you did not understand before. The seers will contemplate the silhouette of the teacher, who as the Holy Spirit will make to you new revelations. There, in your bosom, the sick will ease their pain and the dying will regain life, the sad will find comfort and the desperate calm. 66. With the example of your own life you will teach, I will do the rest. I wanted to share with you in this work of love, so that by loving your brothers you will love me. 67. Come prepared to the day of my last lesson, because it will be like the last supper of the second era, in which you will come to receive my last words. 68. Those who have not fulfilled my mandates, nor have they been concerned about spirituality, the stubborn in the past customs and traditions, they will have to cry and later, reading in the book that I am entrusting to you, they will realize their mistakes, then full of pain and regret they will try to make up for their mistakes. 69. The light of my love illuminates the world and its paths, when the darkness threatens to engulf them. Day after day, in great numbers, Spirits arise that leave this life without knowing where they are going, 
don't forget them. Give them the light of your prayer, of your charity. Carelessness of light beings because they are already in the light and they are the ones who watch over you. Do not pray only for men. Pray for all your fellow men. My peace be with you.